As always, we're gonna start with the conclusion first. 48 volts, 15 amp hour, 500 watt or 750 watt electric bike. Let me explain. I understand not all of you are in the know when it comes to voltage, so we're gonna simplify it, okay? Power wheels, when you're young, you've always wanted one of those power wheels, those little kid toys that you ride on. Okay, those are six volts. A powerful one is 12 volts. A toy like a Razor scooter that's electrified for kids is 24 volts. There are electric bikes that are 36 volts, but do not expect those to perform well on hills, okay? Those can go on flats and you can run errands and run your neighborhood, but don't expect to go on hills very well or even at all. The standard nowadays in the United States is going to be 48 volts, okay? So when you're comparing, you're seeing different e-bikes and you're looking at the voltage, if, you, if you're not looking at 48 volts and you see something that's 36 volts, then you know that it's a little bit under par, or a little bit underperforming. If you find something that's 52 volts, then you know that it's a little bit higher than normal, okay? So 48 volts is where you wanna start with. If you're gonna deviate from 48 volts, have a very good reason why. Okay, now we're gonna talk amp hours. Batteries come in a voltage and then an amp hour. So 48 volts, 10 amp hour, or 15 amp hour, or 20 amp hour. Okay, 15 is going to be, I'm gonna call the standard. Okay, a lot of, many, many, many e-bikes these days are going to be 15 amp hours. Forget what that means for a moment. <laughs> Just think 15 is a standard. So if you have something that's 20 amp hours, it's gonna be a little bit more than normal. If you have something that's 10 amp hours, it's gonna be a little bit less than normal. If you come across something that's like seven or eight amp hours, know that that is on the very, very small scale. Okay, amp hours is gonna be equivalent to what you can call gas or juice in or electricity inside the battery. So the larger number for the amp hour, the more range you have, generally speaking. Obviously, if you're comparing different bikes, one is heavier and it has a higher amp hour and one is lower in weight and has a lower amp hour, they may get the same range because it takes more power and electricity to operate and propel something that's heavier, right? So just all you need to really know is that 15 amp hour is a standard. If you have something that's 20, 18, something higher than 15, that's higher than typical. And if you have something under 15, it's gonna be lower than typical. All right, we're gonna calculate range using a very simple equation, which I'm gonna go over now. It's going to be voltage times amp hours divided by 20. Okay, so in our example, 48 volts times 15 amp hours equals 720. 720 divided by 20 is going to be 36. So in that example, you're gonna get 36 miles. But remember, that is the full capacity of the battery to from 100 to zero. So you're not gonna use that in the real world of say 18 miles out and 18 miles back to complete your 36 miles. It's more likely gonna be maybe 15 miles out and 15 miles back and you may be running your e-bike to more than one destination. So keep that in consideration as you're kind of going about the city. The way we're calculating that is making very strong assumptions, okay? And that assumption is that you're using 20 watt hours per mile. All right, so if you are a heavier rider or you are a lighter rider or you are going on different types of terrain or you have different levels of pedal assist or different hills or maybe there's descents that is going to be a huge variable in how we calculate range so no one can really tell you exactly how much range you're going to get and that's why you're always getting a range of ranges <laughs> and so but that's going to be the basic calculation again it's going to be voltage times amp hours divided by 20. so let's use another example of say a 36 volt battery with 20 amp hours okay so 36 times 20 is 720 and we divide that by 20 and you still get 36. So it's interesting that you have a battery that has lower voltage, but more amp hours, and you're getting the same range, okay? So again, this is gonna differ depending on the rider and the terrain and the type of routes you're gonna take, but that is a good number to start at. And keep in mind that, again, you're not gonna run your battery dry, so you are going to use only a portion of that number that you find with the voltage times amp hours divided by 20. So if you buy your e-bike and you're not getting the range that you calculated, then you're gonna use a different number, okay? So rather than dividing your watt hours by 20, you may be dividing it by 15. Maybe you're a lighter rider, you don't use as much throttle, and you're not 
going off road, not going on hills as much, then you may be dividing that number by 15 instead of 20. If you're a heavier rider or you're just more aggressive or you're going up hills a lot or the terrain isn't as smooth, then you may be using a number like 30 and divide, dividing your watt hours by 30. So you're gonna have to kind of tweak it depending on all your conditions, but 20 is the number that most people are considering um, for kind of the average, if there's such a thing. <laughs> Okay, now you're wondering how long does it take to charge these batteries, okay? The equation is very simple. I'm gonna put it up here on the screen. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide the amp hour of the battery by the amperage of the charger, okay? When you look at the charger, it's gonna say either two amp charger or four amp charger, or five amp charger. Generally speaking, it's going to be a two amp charger. If you have something higher than two amps, like four amps or five amps, that is considered a quick charger. The faster you charge, the less healthy it is for the battery. So I wouldn't recommend charging quickly or getting a charger that has high amp unless you're really looking to be charging quickly. But most people are gonna be running their bikes for a battery cycle in the day and then kind of leaving it that and then running it the next day. Um, very few people, I imagine, would be running the bike, charging, and then running the bike again. So having high amps for your charger is not necessarily a good thing. Um, it's actually, again, healthier if it's lower. But again, the way you calculate it is amp hour divided by the amp of the charger. Okay, so example is this bike right here, Juiced Rip Racer, is a, we're going to call it 16 amp hour battery. Okay, 16 and the charger is two amps. So we're gonna divide 16 by two, okay? So that means that bike takes eight hours to charge, fully charged from zero. Generally speaking, when we ride our e-bikes or have EV cars, we're not necessarily going to run it dry, right? So don't let that number of hours concern you or scare you necessarily, because generally you're just gonna to be topping it off, hopefully. So again, 16 divided by two amps is gonna be eight hours. Um, this bike here, this guy is a do-it-yourself bike that I made out of a Trek 800, and that has a 20 amp hour battery. And the charger is a two amp. So 20 divided by two is gonna be 10. So that bike is gonna take 10 hours to charge. I do have a charger that is five amps, okay? So that same bike, 20 amp hours, divided by five is gonna be four. So with the high speed or fast charger, that is going to charge it, 20 divided by five is four, four hours, compared to 20 divided by two is 10 hours. Okay, so four hours versus 10 hours. Another spec you're gonna hear about is the amp rating of the controller. Okay, so e-bikes have something called a controller. All you really need to know is it's this metal box that's hidden on the bike somewhere. and the motor has a particular amp rating, meaning it will draw a certain number of amps, okay, from the system. And so the controller allows or limits the number of amps that are being drawn by the motor. Okay, so what does that mean in English, <laughs> okay? What it means is the, the controller amp rating, the higher it is, the more amps it is allowing the motor to draw, okay? So if you have a motor that can draw 25 amps, but your controller is only 20 amps, then it's limiting it, right? So it's not giving its full potential of 25 amps, which is not a bad thing because you generally don't wanna be running your bike at full capacity necessarily, especially all the time. So when you're looking at a controller and you see something is 20 amps versus 25 amps or higher or lower, then you have an idea of how much limitation that controller is putting onto the motor. Okay, so generally speaking, we're gonna see 20 and 22 and 25 amp controllers. If you have something higher, that is unusually high. If you have something lower than 20, then that's gonna be unusually low. So 20 to 25 is going to be the standard, again, for controllers. Okay, what about watts? Some bikes have a 250 watt motor. Some have a 350 watt motor. Some have a 500 watt motor. Some have 750 and some have a thousand and some have even higher. The limit for the United States is 750 watts. Okay, 750 watts. As the e-bike craze is happening, companies are maxing that out. 
they want to brag about them having 750 watt motor. Okay, so if you have, <clears throat> if you're looking at something that's 500 watt motor, then you know it is less than the limit. 500 isn't bad. I would not do 350 and I would not do 250 generally speaking. 250 and 350 watt motors are going to be fairly weak. Um, those are motors that you're going to run on flats, on paved roads. If you're going to do anything serious enough to require electrification, like an e-bike, I would recommend 500 watts minimum. But if you want to max it out at the United States limit, that would be 750 watts. In Europe, just so you know, the limit is 250 watts. So all you Americans who are complaining about 750 watts being low and you don't get to use a thousand, just think at least you're not in Europe with 250 watt limit, okay? So for the standard, it's going to be 500 to 750 watts for an e-bike. But Brian, but Brian, I keep seeing these websites that say it peaks out at 1,000 or peaks out at 1,200. What does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. <laughs> that is just marketing. I don't want to say bogus, but what happens is when you're running the e-bike and you run it hard, there are instances where you can peak out at higher than the limit of the motor. Okay, the limit. So a 750 watt motor can easily peak out at over 1,000 watts. Okay, but... When you're comparing bikes and you're looking at them, you're gonna be looking at the motor wattage, not the peak output. The peak output is not something that you can sustain for long periods of time anyway. So for matter of consistency, when you're comparing bike to bike, I would look at the motor wattage without the peak number. Okay, let's summarize that. 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 500 watt motor or 750 watt motor. That's it. Those are the specs you're gonna be looking at, okay? 48 volts, 15 amp hours, 500 or 750 watts. Again, if you go higher, then you're higher than the standard. If you go lower, then you're going lower than the standard. So lower ones generally gonna cost a little bit less. They're gonna perform a little bit less. When you get higher, okay, it's, it's not gonna be that much better performing, okay? And the reason why is because if you have amp hour for a battery, you're gonna need way, way more than twice the amp hour to get twice the range because empty batteries don't weigh any less than full batteries. So you're lugging around all this weight, okay? So the bike has to lift the extra capacity or extra weight before you see any difference or any improvement or increase in range, okay? So it, it's gonna get exponentially worse. So the, the larger the battery in terms of amp hours, the less efficient it's gonna be. So don't be fooled in getting a battery that is too gigantic. You're not gonna want a battery that's way too big. I know a lot of YouTubers and people out there are saying, get the biggest battery you can afford. And, and I understand because the battery is a expensive component of the bike, if not the most expensive. <clears throat> so if you find that that battery capacity isn't big enough and you need to replace it, then you're gonna be spending a lot of money for a new battery and then you may not know what to do with the old one. So I get that. But efficiency, just so you know, gets worse exponentially as you increase in amp hours. And when you increase in voltage, Generally, voltages increase in, in numbers of 12, right? So 36, 48, 52. So because the, the jump from 36 to 48 is going to be very big, right? Because of the percentage of between 36 and 48. But when you go from 48 to 52, the percentage isn't that big of a difference. So the increase in power is also not gonna be that big of a difference.